Why wait to earn the degree you deserve? You have the experience. You have the knowledge. Now is the time to get the credit for the work you've done and earn the recognition you deserve by starting your comeback at Purdue Global. It's time to earn a degree you'll be proud of. A degree that employers will respect. It's never too late. Never too late to come back stronger and move forward in your career. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. Purdue's online university for working adults. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Episode 82, Why You Can't Finish Paying Off Your Debt. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Welcome to a very special episode of the Frugal Friends Podcast. Why is it so special? (laughs) Well, (laughs) Jill, that voice is Jill. (laughs) Um, because this is the uh, special pay off your debt for good book release episode. Woo-hoo! This is a quasi half episode, half celebration, mostly episode. I'm just going to be over here celebrating. But we are going to go through all of the parts of the book, a little overview, and um, help you figure out how to stick with the debt-free journey. And if you are interested more, you can go get the book. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm so excited for you. Congrats, Jen. Man, I'm excited. It's done. I did yeah. it. This Ooh. is Jill. I have not written a book. I've written a bunch of papers. <laughs> yes. Probably yes. could compile it to a book. Yes. You're on <laughs> your way. You are. Yeah. And when you write your book, we'll have a special book episode party for you. Thank you. But first, we'll do our sponsors. Also brought to you by hanging in there when you're definitely not killing it, but you're also not completely out of the game. Like that little cat poster of a tiny little feline clinging to the side of a wall so it can feel on this financial journey. But take heart and don't let go, tiny kitten. Hang in there. When we don't know what else to say, but we know giving up is bad advice. Mm. Hang in there, tiny kitten. <laughs> Man, I wish I am. I wish I would have heard this months ago. I could have included that in the book. Hang in there, tiny kitten. That would have been. That would have been the ending. Someone will come rescue you yeah. soon. <laughs> that would have been the last line of the book. Hang in there, tiny kitten. No context. That poster always makes me laugh so much. <laughs> It's so good. (laughs) All right, let's get into it. I am like, there's so much excitement, like building out of my head. It's hard for me to focus, but we are going through two different headlines, just like we normally do. And um, they're all pertaining on why it's hard to pay off debt, what you can do to get through that journey. And they're kind of all just overviews of things that I talk about in the book. So We'll start with uh, this article from The Balance. It's seven reasons it's so hard to get out of debt. Uh, what do you think about this one, Jill? It was good. I think they gave some really good tips. The thing that didn't quite resonate with me about this particular article is that they seem to be writing to the person who is in debt because of overspending. Mm -hmm. So I think that leaves out a whole segment of people who are in debt because of student loans or if you count your mortgage, which isn't frivolous spending that you need to really rein it in and have some self-control like you never have in the past. So I think it's worth saying that there are different reasons that we find ourselves in debt. One's not necessarily better than another, but then the way that we approach it might be different. But all said and done, I think great tips. Yeah. I think that's an important distinction to make because 
I was in debt, not from frivolous spending. It was because it was my student loans and then a car. Mm-hmm. And and it was a Toyota Corolla used. It was a, you know, <laughs> a very frugal car Yeah, we know you. Choice. You're yeah. into the luxury cars, <laughs> blinged out. Girl, I do want a Lexus one day. But it's, I still couldn't own my participation in going into debt. I was still in denial. And um, like that caused such a disconnect between me and my debt. I kind Mm -hmm. of, I kind of identified as the debt, but I also thought, oh, I'm doing all these good things financially. I'm fine. This debt is fine. It was such a weird season in my life. But yeah, so it's just as important to figure out all of this stuff when you're overspending as much as when you're being quote unquote frugal. Uh, Mm -hmm. I was definitely just in a scarcity mindset, but we talk about that later. But Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so these seven things, the first one is you have to change your lifestyle. So you definitely have to make some changes if you're going to get out of debt. Like (laughs) what? If if you didn't have to make changes, you'd already be getting out of debt. Mm -hmm. You know, it's true. Yeah. So um, in my book, I talk about how to use habits to change your lifestyle because your brain goes on autopilot and you either fall into your bad habits or you can fall into your good habits. And if you've got good ones, then it uh, makes changing your lifestyle really easy. Mm. Not to go off on too much of a rabbit trail, but what did you learn about setting new habits as you wrote your book? I So I really emphasized um, starting small and uh, picking one or two habits, starting with the healthy. And then once you've established those habits, or at least what they're going to be, then Mm -hmm. figure out the bad habits you're going to replace those habits with. So if I Mm -hmm. want to stop spending at Starbucks, which is something I talk about a lot in the book because I love coffee, then my good habit was making coffee at home. So Mm -hmm. replacing that habit with the good habit and just kind of looking at it like a formula. You'll find that I'm very formulaic. I like to break things down and compartmentalize. That helps me wrap my brain around things Mm -hmm. better. And I think a lot of other people feel the same way. Yeah, that's excellent. And then the tangibles to Mm -hmm. it can make it so helpful to look back and say, okay, I did that. I did that one tangible thing and it helped. Yeah. But also, so yeah, certainly start small. But the second one on this list is sacrifice for now. And so certainly in this debt payoff journey, it is going to require sacrifice. So if we're not doing that, then yeah, the process is going to be a lot slower or it just won't happen. Mm -hmm. And But I like how they said for now. And that's not to say that, okay, we throw frugality or all these other healthy habits out the window once we pay off debt, but the degree to which we have to sacrifice can shift. Mm -hmm. But if we want to go hard at specifically paying off debt, it will require big sacrifice. Certainly cut out the daily latte, but those aren't the big sacrifices that are going to make the big difference here. So we're talking not getting into big car loan payments. We're talking Uh, not buying a house possibly when you do have six figures, you still owe back on debt. Mm -hmm. We're talking not spending a a whole bunch of money on Christmas. Uh, These things that are actually going to make the difference to sacrifice in those areas. Yeah. I really like the idea of minimalist frugality. So only choosing a few things to cut back on versus you know, daily lattes, which also are Mm -hmm. important. That's just like a mental lifestyle thing that you need to get a hold of. But um, I really, four categories are most important, housing, transportation, food, and monthly bills. And if Mm -hmm. you can find a way to save on those things, then you don't have to be as involved in your day-to-day pinching pennies. Mm -hmm. You will save hundreds, like sacrificing for now, like renting a smaller apartment or moving a little further outside of the city, changing up the way you commute to work. So sacrificing for now is, I think the for now part is something a lot of people tend to forget. So I liked their distinction on that one. 
Yeah. And I love your refocus on the four big areas, the yeah. housing, transportation, food, and monthly bills. It's actually our first four episodes, essentially, because yeah. those are the the basics, the pillars of where we spend the most money. And so if you can focus in on those areas, you're going to be far better off in your debt repayment journey. Yeah. Uh, the third one is high finance charges take much of your payment. And so this is where your debt payoff method comes in, whether you're choosing the debt avalanche or the debt snowball. And honestly, I used a combination of both. And I recommend people do what works for them. I know mm -hmm. it's not very popular to uh, fall in the radical middle uh, mm -hmm. when, when you're writing a book. Um, but I, I think that people really need to take a good look at themselves, the way they act, the way they spend, and decide and how they think, how they process things. And like math people are really going to love the debt avalanche and psychological like people. I mean, we're all psychological people, but people that are more into psychology are going to like the debt snowball. So you mm -hmm. just have to figure out what works for you and you don't have to be married to either one. You can, you can go off with the other. <laughs> you have not covenanted together. Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. And number four of the reason that this article lists for why it can take so long or feel so difficult or run into so many barriers with debt payoff is when you see everyone else spending. And this is a big one, especially when it comes to getting together with friends. Everyone else is going out to dinner or I just saw somebody post in our Frugal Friends Facebook community group, alliteration, that every, all of our coworkers over lunch were going to be buying Christmas costumes or Christmas, I don't know. Christmas costumes? Or yeah, something like that. Or Christmas gifts or th things to wear around Christmas time, like ugly sweater or the, oh. the matching pajamas. Like that's oh. a new thing. But you only really use it one time a year, but then you've got this pressure with coworkers that we're all going to use our time off. And so if I'm not doing that, then do I really have a place to hang out with them? Mm -hmm. Can I sit there and watch them all one click by while I don't? Uh, just yeah. an example. I think it's a great one, but it, it's it's a real thing. Everyone else is spending and they just anticipate that you're going to jump in on it. So that's where a lot of personal boundaries and determination towards your own goals is really important. And this depends on each individual of how exactly you're going to approach that, whether, hey, I'm going to stick this one out or, yeah, I'm going to join, but here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm not going to do. Yeah, I'll join you out for dinner, but I'm going to get a soda and that's mm -hmm. it. Or I'm going to get an appetizer or, hey, I already ate, but I'd love to sit and chat with you all. Who, to find your area of comfort without necessarily sacrificing relationship or for a season, hanging out with people who have similar goals as you. Yeah, I think that's it's a very important topic to talk about relationships when you're paying off debt, because that is the biggest thing nobody told me about mm -hmm. when I started paying off our debt is that my relationships that I had prior would change. Mm. So that's a big thing I talk about. And it kind of ties into the next one is that others, uh, five is others may not support your debt repayment. Mm -hmm. So whether it's not just people like outright being negative, but just not um, being supportive of you, like encouraging mm -hmm. you and just being overall um, just like a neutral or quasi negative presence. Mm -hmm. So I wish there was a tip that I could give you that this is the three things you do to make sure that your relationships are, you know, healthy. But part of it just comes down to like building thicker skin. Like you mm -hmm. really do become more emboldened. Mm -hmm. um, I think boundaries, like you said, are on the path to that, how you get to boldness and thick skin. Uh, so I talk about that in the book. And mm -hmm. One of the great things, though, is that while some of my relationships changed, I gained these other relationships that I would have never had to, I would have never had the reason to make these new friends if I hadn't been trying to spend less money and spend more time in my area. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a bad thing mm -hmm. that everyone else is spending money and 
they're just not in the season to where they're paying off debt, Mm -hmm. that's not a bad thing. So you also can get judgmental when you're trying to pay off debt thinking like everybody else should too. Mm -hmm. If it's not their season, it's not their season. Mm -hmm. And and don't bring that negativity to their life either. Mm -hmm. But just support yourself and surround yourself with others. And sometimes it's family and you can't get away from that. And boundaries come in there too. But yeah. And that's another thing that the article mentions is not even those on the peripheral, but even within your own family. Mm-hmm. Certainly, if you've got kids or a spouse, then they have to be on board with this too. If you're yeah. planning to cut the cable, well, that affects everybody. Or if you want to move to one car, that affects everybody. So there's other aspects too that can be barriers to how quickly you can pay off debt depending on how many other people are impacted by some of the decisions you make to cut spending. Yeah, it is. It's difficult, but it's not impossible. So Mm -hmm. you just have to be aware of it and factor it in Mm -hmm. to your debt repayment. Yeah. And we've got an episode on getting your spouse on board. And I know there's plenty of articles online about this too, but which cut leads us next to number six, which is unexpected expenses. This one is massive. Mm -hmm. And Jen and I will share our own barriers, things that have cropped up and, I don't know, thrown us off track a bit in our debt payoff. But this one's a big one of... Yeah, the the car needs fixing or something on the house breaks or you've got to do some last minute travel or you name it. There's constantly unexpected expenses coming up. And of course, having an emergency fund helps with this. That's absolutely a recommendation that we have is to have an emergency fund. Decide what amount makes sense for you and your family. But yeah, this can throw us off our goals really easily. And that's where it's not letting it completely wipe you out and be an excuse to not keep going. But this does come with the territory. And it's a shame, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we can't still reach our goal. Yeah. When Jill and I were in Nashville last month, Jill, do you remember the story that I think it was Ken Davis told about how he went to hang out with those Navy SEALs? I don't know if it was him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so he, um, no, 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 I think it was Chris Hogan. Oh, yeah. And he was asking them, like, how do you, how are you so tough or or whatever? Mm -hmm. The Navy SEAL was like, we plan for obstacles. Like, Mm -hmm. we expect them. We train for them and we plan for them. Mm-hmm. And and that is their whole job is to plan, train, and expect obstacles in their missions. And I feel like it's the same for our debt-free journey. Mm-hmm. You have to plan, train, and expect obstacles. Mm-hmm. And if you do that, if you plan for them in advance and you expect them, you'll be leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else trying to pay off debt. Yeah. (laughs) They will not throw you off as much. Yeah. Not only will you potentially have the money to pay for it because you've planned for it, but the important aspect of what it does to our psyche, which Mm -hmm. is so much of what we're talking about of staying motivated and, and determination and habit formation and all these things. When something comes in that's unexpected, it has the potential to wipe us out because we feel defeated or we want to give up. But if we've expected them then we just keep moving right along. I knew this was coming. Here it is. And I'm not thrown off and I don't need to give up right now. So what Mm -hmm. that can do for our mental status in this process is super important. Yes. Yeah. And the very last one on this list is it's hard to pay off debt because it can take a long time. And we underestimate how long it will take. Sometimes we overestimate. We thought we would pay off our debt in five years, and it ended up taking 23 months once we got our momentum going, even through all the obstacles that we, that should not, we should not have paid it off in two years and is, yeah, but it can take a long time and you Mm -hmm. have to be ready for that. It will take typically several years and to go from living one lifestyle to doing a 180 and living another lifestyle for several years, you are literally the worst at money you are ever going to be <laughs> while you're paying off debt. Think about that. 
You are the worst at money you are ever going to be. And you're trying to do this huge thing. Mm -hmm. And so you got to give yourself grace and you got to accept it's going to take some time. Mm. Good word. Mm. And prepare your mind to be in it for the long haul. Yeah. That I'm going to wish I was there quicker and maybe use that as fuel to incorporate other things to help you do it faster, but know that this is not going to be an overnight thing. Mm -hmm. Right. We know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, this means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. Oracle.com slash strategic. So that's why it's so hard to pay off debt. Our next article is how to get motivated uh, Mm -hmm. to keep going. So Mm -hmm. part of the book is understanding why our money mindset is like it is. And the other part is practical tips to make it through. Yeah. And they're all interwoven into this like 21 days of action steps. So this one is from Psych Central and it's 12 tips to get motivated when you're stuck in a life rut. And I love the opening line on this one. Don't worry, it's only a temporary rut. Because it so is. And (laughs) Mm -hmm. people let let it derail them so easily, even though it's really usually shorter than we anticipate. Mm -hmm. So the first one on this list is to write on paper how you're spending your time. I liked this one because I talk a lot about writing down your goals and writing down your why. Like, Writing things down and seeing it, having it tangible and visible is so important. Um, And that's why I created a workbook to go along with the book for free because I'm so passionate about how important it is to write things down. Mm -hmm. And so, but I didn't think about writing on paper how you're spending your time. I talk about simplifying your schedule and uh, this method called bandwidth blocking so you can like schedule your time. Hmm. But I never thought about having like a time inventory. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important. Yeah. Similar concept to that. The app, you can check your, or at least on Apple, you can check how you're spending your screen time, which is a scary thing. Yes. Oh, God. But can help us know, where is my time going? I might think that I'm spending a lot of time on my goals and not a lot of time on entertainment, but you might find that as you start tracking it, that it's different. Same with spending money, tracking where it's going to actually get an accurate handle on where you're spending versus mm-hmm. where you think you're spending. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
I liked number five on here, which talked about overcoming the fear of criticism. If we are able to overcome this fear, then we are better able to stick to our motivation, stick to our goals. And so the suggestion that they give here is to just not basically, essentially not share what you're doing with those who disapprove. Mm-hmm. Assuming that it's a healthy thing, right? We're talking about <laughs> healthy goals here. Yeah. And if you know that this is going to be something beneficial for you and your family, but you know that it might, others might fundamentally disagree with you based on their background, whatever, then they might not be the person to get feedback from or to constantly be going to thinking that maybe this time they'll understand and they'll be supportive. If that's if that just consistently tears you down, then don't go to them. Don't look for their approval. Just stay quiet. Share it with people who you know are supportive of it because those things, those people who are very critical, who aren't getting on board, that can really slow us down in our motivation towards goals. Yeah, definitely. If it's not their time, it's not their time. Mm -hmm. You just have to be patient and really lead by example. Do your Mm -hmm. thing and then they'll (laughs) literally do your thing in silence. And then one day you'll be debt free and you'll be doing all of these things that they want to do. And then they'll see it. That will speak louder than any words you yeah. could have said to them. Oh my word. If I was tr- if I tried to convince people about me living in an RV being a good idea while trying to make the move into an RV, that would have been so overwhelming. Yeah. I needed to focus on moving into an RV, not also getting everybody around me on board with the idea. Mm-hmm. It's like a, it's it's the same concept. So if people aren't on board with it, then don't talk about it. Just yeah. do it. Usually that's more effective anyway. Just just do it. Yes. Nike. Just just do it. <laughs> not sponsored. Not sponsored. But if you're listening, come at us. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I also liked number four, overcome the fear of failure with small risks. And I think this speaks to resiliency. Resiliency is the ability to bounce back to the same capacity or stronger after failures or mistakes. And sometimes coming out of a setback some people can just take them in stride and those are the people that pay off their debt quickly and and you're like, oh, it seemed so easy for them. But honestly, it was just, they were just resilient. And so mm-hmm. if you didn't develop a natural resilience growing up, because not everybody does, you can actually train your mind to become resilient and that's by taking small risks and failing small And then bouncing back from that and looking at your progress over time to show yourself that you can bounce back as strong and stronger than before. Mm -hmm. I also like number 11 on here, which was says, stop using distractions as an excuse. And they use examples like, I don't have any support or it's just too hard or my job keeps me too busy, which to me is just excuses in general. I think this is a big one that can keep us from getting at goals. And similar to, I think we had this conversation with Rob Berger when he was on the show a couple episodes back, just about that, the difference between extrinsic versus intrinsic motivation and how Mm -hmm. so often the people who aren't doing this thing have all the excuses in the world of why they can't. Well, I have kids right now, or I'm not married, or I am married, or (laughs) I live in an expensive area, or I'm still in school, or what, like whatever, you can fill in the blank. Essentially, they're excuses. It doesn't mean that it's going to look exactly the same as your neighbor who is paying off debt, but it also doesn't mean that you can't do it yourself in a way that makes sense for you. So finding that motivation inside yourself to say, yeah, I can do this through these small changes versus just staying where you're at because you think you can't do any different. Mm, Yes, good word. So I liked two more on this list. So the first one I liked was hang out with the right people. So Mm. we just talked about relationships and how I got these friendships while we were paying off debt. 
And they didn't know the old spendy version of me. They had they didn't expect anything from me uh, because mm-hmm. they didn't know me. And so I got to essentially not like re- reinvent, reinvent myself. Myself. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I gained these new friendships on the basis of like doing free things and being frugal and spending time instead of money, which was so great. But I think another part of putting the right people in your life is having an accountability partner. And mm. probably my my favorite thing that's come out of the book so far is that my editor, who, when she was reading through the book, got to the chapter on finding an accountability partner, and she called up our old coworker, and she's like, we're going to hold each other accountable to pay off our debt. And I was like, yes, you took action. <gasps> and That's amazing. You're yes. inspiring even your editor. I wow. <laughs> I got to get this book. I, it was <laughs> so cool to hear. And so, but like an accountability partner isn't going to necessarily be your best friend. It's going to be somebody who's invested in your success, mm-hmm. uh, will actually tell you no, and vice versa. You are invested in their success and you are willing to tell them no. Mm-hmm. And it's not, they don't necessarily have to be paying off debt, but they have to be working towards a goal. Yeah. And it may not be the entire length of your debt payoff. Accountability partners can be seasonal. Mm-hmm. And I say you should always be looking for your next accountability partner because, you know, life happens and sometimes those relationships have to dissolve, you know, for better or for worse. Mm-hmm. And so, but having someone, whether it's your spouse, whether it's an acquaintance or just a regular friend or even somebody from the debt-free community on Instagram that you can check in with weekly or Mm bi-weekly to make sure you guys are spending within your budget and reaching your payoff goals is so critical to success. And Mm -hmm. yeah, there's so many people, if you search for hashtag debt-free community, uh, so many people on Instagram, they're trying to do this, lurk around for a little bit, put a call out that you're looking for an accountability partner, and uh, you should be able to find one. Yeah, nice. What's the other tip you liked on here? The last one, number 12, mm-hmm. is uh, identify those fears and walk right over them. Boom, mm. boom. Yes. <laughs> so I talked about my scarcity mindset before, and that was a big barrier to me to paying off debt. I thought that I was never going to have a lot of money Mm. so that I would never be able to pay off my debt. Even though I had like my income was rising, I was living at home and then I lived in an affordable apartment and all of this stuff, even when I was on the cusp of getting married and, you know, doubling my income probably, um, (laughs) hopefully we'll talk about that later. Um, (laughs) I still felt like I couldn't pay off debt because I didn't have enough money. Mm -hmm. That was just ingrained in my head from childhood. And I had to separate myself from that, let it go. I also had a lot of like shame and and guilt around taking out my loans because I knew they were loans that I had to pay back, but I didn't realize the magnitude of them until Mm -hmm. it came time. So they gave me a lot of anxiety. And so I had to let go of those feelings too. Mm -hmm. So it was that scarcity mindset, the feelings of guilt, the I'm bad with money mindset Mm -hmm. and walk right over them. And when I let go of them, I'm now able to take pride in everything that I spend money on. I am able to take pride in where I'm at professionally and what I make Mm -hmm. and so many more non-financial Things. Yeah, the ripple because, effect. Yeah, the ripple effect. You know what I'm proud of? I think I do. The, the bill, bill of the week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died, and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. Hey, Jen and Jill. Uh, My name is Gayla, and I'm 
I'm a new listener, so I'm catching up on all your podcasts and loving it. You both do such a great job, and I think your voices are very cool. Um, I There's no actual guy named Bill in my Bill of the Week, but there is a guy, and I am head over heels in love with him. And he and I were just discussing our dream bed, and yes, we are moving forward in life together, so... Um, shopping for furniture is something that we do. And, um, I just paid happily paid $125 through Facebook marketplace for our dream bed, which is an Italian canopy brushed nickel stainless or something or other bed not the canopy kind when you're a little girl with ruffles, but really square. It looks like a box, really modern. Our dream bed that we were just talking about and looking for. $125 worth $2,300. I couldn't pay it fast enough to make sure I got that bed. Anyways, you're doing a great job. Have a wonderful week. Thanks. Oh, it sounds luxurious. Uh-huh. I love the way that that bed sounds. <laughs> I had a bed like this. I mean, the the little girl version that you're describing. So this is just the grown up version that you got at a steal. I That's know. amazing. I love Facebook Marketplace. Oh, uh-huh. I get so many things there. It's so good. I love the way you talk about that. Mm-hmm. I bed. love your voice too. And thanks yeah. for talking about our voices since Thank apparently you. they get attacked, but you're building us right back up. I know. We are we are stereotypical valley girl voices, but But I we're not appreci- even. That's the thing. I know. People have to mansplain valley girl voices to me. <laughs> I'm just I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, thanks for sharing your bill of the week with us. If anyone else out there listening wants to submit your bill of the week, anything, whether it's related to a bed or a Facebook marketplace bill or or a guy named Bill, doesn't matter, uh, head on over to frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill and tell us what you got. Mm. Yes, please. It's never too late. Never too late to earn a degree. Never too late for a comeback. Between your busy career and taking care of a family, it can feel like there's never a good time to go back to school. But your time is now. Time to start your comeback with Purdue Global. As Purdue's online university for working adults, Purdue Global is dedicated to supporting adults like you who know it's time to earn the recognition you deserve. You have the experience. You have the knowledge. It's time to get credit for the work you've done. You can balance work, family, and everything in between while earning your degree. It's time to move forward in your career, for your family, and for yourself with a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will recognize and respect. You're worth this investment in yourself to earn a degree you deserve. It's never too late. Never too late to go back to school and come back stronger with an education you can trust. Now is the time for your comeback. Start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. From the studio who brought you the number one podcast, The Piketon Massacre. This is Murder 101. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. Those murders happened in the mid-1980s. He's out there doing stuff. He just didn't stop. Everything that the students predicted through their profile turned out to be accurate. Redhead killer profile. Male, Caucasian, 5'9 to 6'2, 180 to 270 pounds. Unstable home, absent father and a domineering mother. Right handed, IQ above 100, most likely heterosexual. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. Just because some of these women no longer have people to speak for them does not mean that they deserve to not be spoken for. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? I said, Are you going to kill me? And he said, Yes. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now for the lightning round. Pew, pew, pew. Pew. This is our second favorite time of the week, and we are going to share with you our biggest setbacks on Mm. the road to debt freedom. Here you go. Getting authentic. 
I learn best through other people's stories. And you will find a lot of my stories in the book. Mm. And because I feel like stories, you can read a definition and an explanation online, but until you hear how somebody has interpreted it in real life, you don't fully comprehend it. And so these are ours. My first one was um, we experienced a drastic underemployment Mm -hmm. during our debt payoff. Mm -hmm. I was only working 25 hours a week is all I could get. For me, that was full time. And Travis was not even employed when we got married, hence why I said earlier, I thought I was going to be getting a second income, but I wasn't sure and um, was employed for a few months and then got laid off. So yeah, we experienced one layoff and one unemployment and me being employed part time. Mm -hmm. So through all that, we had to really hustle our butts off to make money Mm -hmm. because we did not have a lot of money coming in. Mm -hmm. And I've shared my shingle story before, how I thought I could out earn my spending and then worked so many side hustles, I gave myself shingles. <laughs> and that is how I became an advocate for frugality yeah. <laughs> through that story. It is not a good look. Nope, it's not. And uh, so, yeah, that was our setback. So I see these people like we were making, gosh, I was making 36 grand. And Travis probably made just around that and everything else we made up for in side hustles. Yeah. Um, and cutting our spending. And uh, we took a lot of the tips that I talk about in cutting the big four. And that's how we, that's how we did it. Yeah. Very similar to what you're saying. For us, low income jobs combined with switching jobs. So when, when Eric and I got married, I still was in school for a year. So <laughs> that that was a thing. Oh my goodness. There was a time <laughs> when we literally had $11 in our bank account. That's it. That was what we had to our names. And I think we probably still went out to eat. I think I was like, I'm hungry. <laughs> How much do we have in our account? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, and then my first job out of college was at a nonprofit that paid me $24,000. And that was exactly when Eric decided that he wanted a a career change (laughs) (laughs) that we thought would be quick. His career change ended up taking, uh, a few years, you know, maybe like (laughs) half a decade, but that's okay. (laughs) He did make money in the meantime, but it was never stable. Uh, We are entrepreneurs to the core. So that's a whole other piece is not even throughout our married lives, not consistently bringing in income, not, not being employed by somebody who is paying us a regular salary. So, I mean, you name it. I, we just haven't made a lot of money for various reasons and yet still paying off debt. Like we still found ways that worked for us, which I share all throughout the podcast. I won't get into all of it, but so that you all know, I had $11 in my bank account at one point. Yeah. And you ca- you cash flowed grad school as well through yes. all this. Yes. So yeah, you're still, you're paying off some debt, but you cash flowed grad school. Yeah. Through right. all of this. But that was another bit of a setback. That money mm-hmm. we could have thrown at debt and been debt free, but we decided in the midst of debt payoff, mostly because I there was a time, it was time limited on when I could, could go back to grad school. Uh, yeah, we didn't go into more debt for it, but it was something that kind of delayed and prolonged how long it took to pay off debt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So our second setback was buying a house. Mm -hmm. We, I know it's like passe to buy a house while you're paying off debt, but we were living in this tiny duplex that we were so happy living in. It was so cheap and we were fine with it. And then the landlord calls and he's like, I'm going to turn that into an Airbnb. So I need you to be out in six weeks. And we're like, "Mm, Mm. okay. (laughs) <laughs> so we were looking at other rentals and we just in short notice couldn't find something as affordable. So we, you know, there were other rentals, but they were the price of a mortgage. And I, 
I hear the argument that's like, let me buy a house. It's the same price as rent. But I think if you have the time to look, it's always better to rent while you're paying off debt Mm -hmm. or own your own camper. Uh, but, (laughs) But yeah, so we had about 30 days to find a place and we decided to buy because we didn't want to rent for another Mm -hmm. year. We knew we were going to be debt-free soon. This was near the end of our journey, but we definitely wanted to buy. So we bought our house now. And I think doing that was a really great decision for us because it made us buy on a budget. Mm -hmm. Had I been debt-free, I may have had a higher budget and been able to save more for a down payment. But because we were in a crunch time, it forced us to buy a less expensive house than we otherwise would have. Okay. But putting all that money towards a house, just a down payment, like a small down payment that we were able to cash flow because we were putting crazy amounts towards our debt, uh, it set us back so much mentally because we stopped focusing on one goal and now we had two. Mm-hmm. And I'm a big advocate for having one goal. I read The One Thing by Gary Keller. And so now I'm this like one goal advocate. Mm-hmm. And it it really was goal competition. So we put our debt payoff on hold for a few months and it set us back um, maybe like a month or two because mm-hmm. we were still able, we were cash flowing everything and we put a very small down payment. Mm-hmm. But yeah, mentally it set us back. Mm-hmm. We were just not in the budgeting position or we were eating out. So it just put us in a different headspace. Yeah. And similarly for me, just big expenses. I think I have, there's been different points in this journey where I feel like we're in a good place and then something catastrophic happens with one of our vehicles. And thankfully we've had the money outright to pay for those things. We have not gone into debt for these big unexpected expenses, but it does set us back, or if I could put it this way, slowed us down. And I think that goes back to the first article that we were talking about of expecting those things and anticipating that it will take a long time. You know, I I wish that I had the story of, I paid off my debt in two years, but reality is <laughs> I we don't make a lot of money. And there were other things that were also important to us, like me getting my master's degree, investing now so that in the long run, we might be able to be a little bit better off and be able to live more generously in the future. Mm -hmm. So there isn't, I guess the point is that there isn't one right way of doing things. Mm -hmm. And if I can give this reminder to anybody listening, the people who have crazy debt payoff stories of, I paid off $175,000 in 17 months, that's because they make a crap ton of money. Make Mm. no mistake, they are bringing in six figures. We have interviewed these people. We have talked with these people privately. Like That's what's happening. Yes. So if you are not not getting after your debt payoff journey as fast as you see people are doing it on Instagram, it's probably because your life circumstances are different, not because you're failing in some way. Some people are better set up in their lives to take massive hacks at debt. So it's okay if that's not your situation. Don't let that be a reason or an excuse to give up. Know that, yeah, it's taking me five plus years to pay off of student loan debt. I'm still doing it. I don't have the two-year story, but I also don't have the six-figure salary. Mm -hmm. Oh, girl, preach. (laughs) Yes. Everyone should know what's going on behind the scenes. And the people people with regular incomes that are just trying to make ends meet and put more towards debt, they're doing this in three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. Like, If you're, you know, dual income, no kids, you can maybe do it in two years like us, but we hustled and I totally believe it's doable, but you just have to know, you have to be okay and comfortable where you are in life Mm -hmm. and take the hand God's dealt you and go with it. Yeah. You got to do what works for you. But don't use that as an excuse to stay where you're at. Correct. You can keep moving forward. I no longer make $24,000 a year. Mm-hmm. Praise yeah. the Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those nonprofits, gotta, yeah. man. I don't Oof. know how they get away with it. 
<laughs> that's another story. Yeah. That's another episode. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that is our encouragement to you. Wherever you are right now, you can pay off your debt. We won't tell you how long it's going to take you. We won't tell you how much to put towards it, what percentages, whatever. We're not going to tell you what to do, but know that you can pay off your debt if you are committed to it. Mm -hmm. And if you're committed to doing the things yeah. and all the things we talked about in the first article. Mm -hmm. So, and if you buy pay off your debt for good now available on Amazon, Kindle paperback and audiobook. Nice. And if you are listening to this episode on the weekend, it comes out through Sunday evening at about 4 PM Eastern. The book is 99 cents for nice. the Kindle version. Yeah. That is the lowest price it will ever be. And uh, so if Perfect you want to get the book. Perfect for people still in this debt payoff journey. Yes. 99 I cents. <laughs> yeah. People have these $20 books, $15 books. My books are like three ninety nine, two ninety nine, dollars 99 because you're paying off debt. Yeah. And you, <laughs> you, you got to pay a little encouragement along the way. You don't yeah, need to go gotta, broke in the process. Yeah. You got to pay something for them because they are valuable to me, but they are quick reads. And yeah, it's a quick read. You'll get through it very fast. And then you'll be able to go through it with the workbook and really change your mindset from paying off debt is something I have to do mm. to paying off debt is a journey that is shaping me for the rest of my life. Yeah. Not just my financial life, but it is actually shaping me as a person. Yeah. And I'm thankful for that. And and you will get to that headspace eventually and I'm I'm going to try and help you do that. Mm. Nice. Speaking of yes. books. Yes. We okay, so we are also reading I will teach you to be rich by Ramit Sethi for our book club this month. And we have opportunity for you to win a free copy of this book by leaving us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Screenshot that review and email it to frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. And we give one book for every five reviews that are submitted to us. So it takes all of you to do this for mm -hmm. one, of, one of five to win a book. And we'll yes. select those winners at the end of the month. Yes. And if you want an example of a really great review, mm. uh, this one comes to us from Tess and says, realistic content. This is one of my favorite podcasts. Oh, yeah. It's five stars too. <laughs> you gals are so funny and have realistic, in all caps, content that is relatable and so helpful. I love that you cover several topics that I personally connect with in my own life minimalism, getting out of debt, budgeting, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you, Tess. Thanks, Tess. We love talking about those things. Yeah. Thanks for your review. And y'all can join us over on the Frugal Friends Facebook community page where we have more talks about what we're talking about here. And see you next week. Bye. Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Siriano. Jill, how have you uh, decompressed since Nashville? Oh, are you kidding me? I flew right to Kansas City afterwards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and worked. <laughs> I had one day home to quick do my laundry, pack up again, fly back out, work, came back home. Actually, I was supposed to be in Jamaica then this week for work again. I know it sounds exotic, mm -hmm. but that got canceled, and I'm real grateful. Good. In normal circumstances, I would have been bummed, but I'm like, yeah, no, please. I'd love <laughs> to stay home. <laughs> How about you? I know you slept in a little bit this morning. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, I really, so I decompressed on the plane ride home um, when we went to, Jill and I went to Ramsey Solutions in Nashville and uh, we, we had a great time. I just loved hanging out with you. Oh, and all that the other was people. so fun. Yeah. I loved and, it so much. And being away from my child for two <laughs> nights was not bad either. Having your own hotel room. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Glorious. It was so luxurious. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I really had a, a good time touring Ramsey Solutions and hearing a lot from Chris Hogan and their other people. Um, I... 
went in with some expectations Mm -hmm. and they were completely blown in a positive way. Yeah. So that was my view of the event. Yeah. So generous. Such a generous Mm -hmm. and kind group of people. Very laid back. I think I anticipated a, a bit... A bit more stringent, legalistic, but that was just not the case. They believe in what they say and they stick to it. Like I was appalled. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was imagining, all right, we're going to get there and like somebody's got a credit card. Um, you know, they, they, <laughs> like how did they book all these know, hotel rooms? Too, right? But it was not like they pay in cash. Their entire company, they got close to a thousand employees and everything they do, they just built a whole new building and they paid for all of the construction in cash. Like that to Mm -hmm. me, it's not 100% the way that I do things. I think it's a great model. You can't go wrong with it, but I love that they stick to what they say. It's not, Mm -hmm. oh, you guys do this because we think you can't handle anything else while we're over here doing our own thing. No, they're doing it. They are yeah. doing what they preach, and I, I could not admire them more for it. Yeah, and when you have an organization like that big, it comes back to the one thing concept. You got to be focused on one thing, yeah, and that will take you further, faster than being about several other things. I mean, and we're about several things, and we're okay going slow. Mm-hmm. So that's us, but uh, I admire what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and uh, they throw a great party. Holy smokes. They throw a generous party. Mm-hmm. I don't need to say anymore. I've but never the seen. the food was fantastic. I've never seen tiny little Tabasco bottles. <laughs> Those were they cute. Had tiny little Tabasco <laughs> bottles. How many did you take? <laughs> I did, actually didn't take any. If I Travis should've... had been there, how many would oh, he have my... taken? <laughs> Several. <laughs> He would have put. He would have taken a cup and filled it up with food <laughs> and taken it back to the hotel. <laughs> you best believe. Oh no, shame. Yeah, but Chris Browning and I, when they were kicking us out, we were standing by the oysters and the shrimp, just like <laughs> putting them all into our mouths. We were like leaving there like chipmunks with our cheeks <laughs> full of food. I don't like oysters enough to do that. <laughs> but props. Yeah. <laughs> And cut. Cut. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be... Uh, an awesome season. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.